This is a Bamboo Lab A1 3D printer, and Pablo and I have been using it for the last three and a half months. And in this video, we're going to tell you guys what we think about it. To start, I'd like to mention how beginner friendly this printer is. I remember when I first got my printer, I was able to get it already done and assembled in a matter of 30 minutes. And this is because Bamboo has a video guide to assemble their machines and it's just super thorough and it's super good and well done. So there's basically no confusion when you're building it. Then you also have the Bamboo app or the Bamboo Studio app, that's what it's called. And this app has two features. The first is that it's a slicer app, which means that you could upload any file from a 3D modeling app onto it and it'll just turn it into something that the printer could read. But the reason I really like it is because I just feel like the UI is super easy to understand and you could just, even if you're a very beginner, you could understand what you're doing and read descriptions about how to modify your print to make it better. For example, you could add supports automatically and then you could also go, there's like a little scroll where you could go down and see each layer print, like what each layer prints. And I think that's really good because you could understand sort of how the 3D print works. Another thing that makes this printer so good is its speed, especially if you're running a 3D printing business. If you're running a 3D printing business, you need to print things out fast. It has four different types of speeds. It has 50% a silent speed. Then it has 100%, which is the standard, which still goes pretty fast. Then you could do 124% speed, and then you can go ludicrous mode, which is 166%. And if you do ludicrous mode, that'll actually cut down the print time in half from the standard. And it's more than enough, especially if you're running a business off of this 3D printer. Something that I do want to note about speed printing is that as you increase the speed of any 3D printer, the quality or at least the preciseness of your print tends to degrade a little bit. So if you really want to do something that's a really precise fit, I really recommend you just print at the standard 100% speed. It'll still print pretty fast, just not insanely fast. Now, Something else you may have noticed differently in my printer to Pablo's printer is this device right here. This is called an AMS Lite, and I do highly recommend you actually get one for your A1 because it allows you to multi-material print. So let's say, for example, you have two different colors of the same filament, a black PLA and a white PLA, and you want to overlay some text over the black PLA. You can do that really easily by just using the slicer software and coloring which parts of your print you want in white and which ones you want in black. And on top of that, it also presents new possibilities for different types of materials. Like if you want to combine PETG, PLA, or TPU into the same print, you can now do that. Especially since Bamboo Lab has recently released a new TPU for the AMS specifically. Most beginners in their journey of 3D printing don't actually start multi-material printing until very much later because it is a pretty difficult process to learn if you don't have this AMS. But if you do, it becomes super easy. After that, you have to consider the price, just like when you're buying anything. And this machine is kind of expensive. It costs around $350 with just the machine, but if you add the AMS Lite, it costs around $500. That is expensive, but when you're looking at the competitors in the market, I think the price is justifiable. And if you're a beginner, it's just a lot easier to use this printer because these printers are designed for beginners. On top of that, if you want something that's a little cheaper, you could go with the A1 Mini, which has basically all the benefits that the A1 has, but it's a smaller size. So as with anything 3D printing related, there's always gonna be some pros and some cons. So some of the big problems there is with this printer is the waste. Look at how much waste this printer produces, especially if you're gonna use the AMS system. It needs to always purge out a bunch of filament to change the materials. So if you don't like wasting a lot of stuff, then this is probably not the best printer for you. But it does print really high quality and that's why it purges so much. It honestly isn't that big of a problem, but it kind of does get annoying if you're gonna be doing all these giant prints with a lot of materials. The next problem this printer has is this little camera here. The camera is uh, decent, I guess. What the heck? It really isn't the best, to be honest. If you really wanna take advantage and do time-lapse footages, I do recommend you actually get your own like camera or use your phone or something like that with the remote over here on the end. And now the final caveat of this printer is that, as you can tell, it's not in an enclosure. So it does not really allow you to print out some of the more advanced filaments. Like if you wanna print out like ABS and nylon, it's kind of dangerous, unless you buy a separate enclosure, which is kind of annoying. But to be honest, I found that like for most beginners, 
you never really need to print those filaments out because you already have TPU, PETG, and PLA. And those three filaments alone get you through most builds that you ever want to do. Even though Michael brings up a lot of fair disadvantages about the printer, I think a lot of them already have solutions. In the case of the AMS waste, there's two different solutions you could take. You could either do just a little purge bin to save them for later, as YouTubers like CNC Kitchen have already developed DIY solutions for melting your waste and turning them back into filament. Or you could take the more artsy solution, which I've seen a lot on, a lot on Bamboo, where they take the, the purges and they turn them into art. Then you have the problem with the camera, but that's a simple fix because you could just use a tripod that you could actually just 3D print and put your phone on time-lapse and just record your, your prints. Now, we really hope that this video has actually shown you if this 3D printer is the 3D printer that you guys should buy this year for Christmas. And if this video has been informative, or at least entertaining, we'd really appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. On top of that, go watch last week's video where me and Pablo made some really cool Christmas 3D prints. Have a great holiday season, and we'll hopefully see you guys next week.